And we are beginning this evening in King City, where the badge has been tarnished. Six cops, including former police chief Nick Baldivius and acting police chief Bruce Miller, uh, appear to be taking a fall in a corruption scandal that went public today. Another four King City officers have been arrested. Bobby Carrillo, Jaime Andrade, Mario Motu, and Mark Baker. We have team coverage on the arrests and investigation, beginning with May Chow, who spoke exclusively today with the man at the center of the investigation, Acting Police Chief Bruce Miller. He's live with our top, she's live with our top story. May? Dan, Acting Chief Bruce Miller telling me he's still, quote, shocked and blown away by his arrest and believes his career in law enforcement is over. My reputation is, is soiled. I mean, there's, there's no coming back from this. Even if I'm found innocent, um, people are always going to look poorly upon me. So, yeah, I think my career is... Probably done. Words of a disgraced police chief who, along with six other officers from the King City Police Department, were implicated in a corruption scandal. How long did you know that there was an investigation into your department, and your department hasn't been a stranger to? Uh, we've, we've had investigations going on since last year. They've been ongoing. Our cameras caught up with Acting Chief Bruce Miller minutes after he left the Monterey County Jail Tuesday after posting $20,000 bail on a bribery charge. When you say you were completely surprised, in, in what sense were you surprised? But that the accusation, of the charges they are looking at me is um, receiving or uh, requesting a bribe, and I'm not. I've never done that. And so I was aware of investigations that we've reached out to the FBI and DA's office to do, um, but I didn't know that I would become a suspect. Um, so yeah, a little blown away. Miller wouldn't elaborate on his bribery charge, but investigators say he, along with five other officers, were linked in a car scheme that involved Miller's towing a firm owned by the acting chief's brother. Miller denies any involvement. It doesn't stem from my involvement with the tow company, or there's no link there, but it's uh, other parts of the investigation. You probably should talk to the district attorney. As to Miller's future with the police department? I'm sure, well, likely I'm on, I'm on leave uh, since I've been arrested and criminal charges have been filed. So it's not just a matter of them doing an investigation. But you're still shocked. You didn't know this was coming. I did not know this was coming. No. Blown away. How are you feeling right now? Uh, worst day of my life. Chief Bruce Miller and the four other King City police officers are all on paid administrative leave. Former Chief Nick Baldivias retired last September, but is still on the city payroll because of accrued vacation days. Back to you, Dan. All right, thanks very much. Appreciate it, May. Our team coverage on the investigation and reaction from officials in King City continues now. We begin with Action News reporter Felix Cortez. He broke uh, news of the investigation earlier this year. He's live now with more. Felix. Well, Dan, this is an investigation that started six months ago, but it was today that investigators brought the hammer down. This is not a pleasant time for any of us in law enforcement. Accusations of bribes and embezzlement within the King City Police Department reaching the highest levels of the force, a corruption case that involved the most vulnerable in society. And these are the people who are really disadvantaged, they're not always English speaking, and they said something that really resonated with me. The police, they are taking our property, they're taking our cars, they take our money, and we can do nothing about that. Monterey County District Attorney Dean Flippo described it as an organized scheme in which those arrested targeted and impounded the cars of Spanish speakers. Investigators say if there was a ringleader, Sergeant Bobby Carrillo was it, impounding dozens of cars and directing the business to Miller's Towing, a tow yard owned by acting chief Bruce Miller's brother. For every 10 to 15 vehicles that were impounded by Sergeant Carrillo, he would receive a free vehicle for himself or whatever he wanted to do with it. One of the five cars that Sergeant Carrillo had received free out of all of those impounds that he had done. Captain Miller accepted that car. 
That's Captain Miller, who would become acting chief after Nick Baldivius retired. Both implicated, along with four officers, in the free Cars for Cops scheme. Flippo said hundreds of cars changed hands and possibly sold for thousands of dollars by the officers. Flippo said those arrested dishonored their badge. And the case, he said, highlighted the lack of leadership in the department. The citizens of King City deserve better than what they have been receiving. And it is my hope that this will be the first step in addressing issues. Now the FBI, Sheriff's Department, and DA's office all worked together to make those arrests today. Those arrested were cooperative, taken in without incident. Some of them expected to make their first court appearance on Monday. Dan. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Felix. King City leaders did hold a news conference a short time ago, and Action News reporter Tom Miller was there. The real issue, Tom, just how are they going to go forward with so few cops? He's live in Salinas now. Right, Dan. Despite losing five officers, King City leaders are adamant they're still going to be able to fulfill that mission of the police department to protect and serve the community. In order to do that, Monterey County Sheriff deputies are going to fill in and help patrol the city as needed. The Sheriff's Department already has a station in the city and we're told those deputies who work there are familiar with the area since they're often asked to help out King City PD at major crime scenes. Right now, a 31-year veteran of the force, Sergeant Tirada, who's a Hispanic woman, is taking over, but a search for a new active police chief is underway, so she's there only on a temporary basis. It's expected that by the end of the day tomorrow, a more permanent active police chief will be named and the city manager says he's already talked to several candidates. The city's going to ramp up its search for new recruits by reaching out to the various police academies. But until those five vacant positions are filled, sheriff deputies will supplement the 12 remaining King City officers. In terms of how they will rotate their manpower, uh, that's within their own hands to work out. Um, but given our past history with the sheriff's department, as well as the, our sister cities up in, uh, up the valley, uh, we are confident that we will have no breaks in service and that they will provide exemplary service. And in addition to that message on keeping staffing levels up, the city, leaser, city leaders also talked about just regaining the citizens' trust, particularly in the Hispanic community. They know that this is a total blow to their reputation, that it's going to take some time for these wounds to heal. We're glad you've joined us. We begin on the crime watch and sentencing day for one of six King City officers caught up in that department-wide scandal. Jaime Andrade appeared in a Salinas courtroom this morning. Sunrise anchor Brittany Nielsen was there. She joins us from the newsroom. Well, Dale, today Jaime Andrade did not receive the maximum sentence, but prosecutors say they do respect the judge's decision and are pleased that he will be held responsible for the most serious charge against him. Judge Mark could sentence Andrade to three years probation, 200 hours of community service, 30 days in county jail, and he cannot own weapons or ammunition. At most, he could have received up to 180 days in county jail. Back in February, Jaime Andrade pleaded no contest to this misdemeanor of unlawfully storing a firearm. And in exchange, prosecutors agreed to drop a felony charge of illegal possession of an assault rifle. That charge officially dismissed today. Before Judge Hood decided Andrade's sentence, the deputy district attorney called out a few discrepancies in Andrade. Story. In the probation report, he made certain statements which we felt were untrue, and I want to make sure the judge knew about those. And those included conflicting reports about where he stored the gun and about whether or not he gave permission to investigators to look at a safe where he claimed he kept that assault rifle. Judge Hood also reinforcing today that of all people, a law enforcement officer should know how to store a gun properly and should understand more than anyone the repercussions of a minor getting their hands on a firearm. Now, Andrade must report to the county jail on June 18th. That could work out to be a work program. Uh, and then he's back in court a month later to show proof that he has been working on or completed his community service hours. Again, 200 community service hours. On the crime watch tonight, two of the six King City police officers arrested in February were back in court today to face criminal charges. Former acting chief Bruce Miller and Sergeant Bobby Carrillo are accused of running a towing scheme that targeted unlicensed Spanish-speaking drivers. Miller's brother was also in court. 
Action News reporter May Chow is live outside the Salinas Courthouse with the story. Aaron, it was in the final minutes of today's proceedings that the court heard shocking revelations on how this alleged tow scheme all started. And that came from Brian Miller's testimony that he made a deal with Bobby Carrillo to give him one free car in exchange for 20 towed cars. Brian Miller says he first met Carrillo in 2009 when he would go to his tow yard to say hi. And after several visits, Carrillo saw a car, a 2001 Ford Expedition, that he wanted for his wife and told Brian Miller they should, quote, make a deal. Brian Miller says he refused at first, but Carrillo insisted, saying no one would ever find out about their arrangement. Miller went on to say that Carrillo, quote, got him 20 cars in one weekend. Miller said on the stand that he's given Carrillo eight cars since 2009, and the DA's office says those cars were sold or given away to police officers, including former acting chief Bruce Miller. According to witness testimony, there were complaints from other King City police officers that Carrillo was making a lot of unnecessary traffic stops that resulted in impound tows, and that Carrillo did not follow the department policy that said officers needed to call dispatch to get one of four tow companies companies to the scene. Prosecutors say Carrillo had sent hundreds of cars to Miller's towing. Now the case against Bruce Miller involves a 1995 Nissan Maxima, a car that was seized from a drug case and stored at his brother's tow yard. According to investigators, Carrillo arranged to have that car given to Bruce. This morning, prosecutors added an additional felony perjury charge on Bruce Miller. They claimed the Miller brothers wrote on a DMV title transfer form that $500 was paid for the Nissan Maxima. And Brian Miller testifying on the stand today that no money was ever given or paid for or exchanged on that Nissan Maxima. The preliminary hearing continues tomorrow afternoon where it's expected that the judge will decide if there's enough evidence to take this to trial. Aaron. All right, mate, thank you. There are other King City police officers facing charges as well. Officer Mari Matu, along with former police chief Nick Valdivias, they will stand trial on different felony charges of perjury and embezzlement by a public official. We are beginning tonight with some big twists in what has become a mystery over why the King City Police Chief was fired. News broke yesterday. Tonight, questions linger over why he was canned after less than four months on the job. Action News reporter Bryn Whitaker was in King City today looking for answers. She's live right now with our top story. Bryn? Dan, nobody is talking. We went to the city manager as well as other city leaders and the acting police chief, the same acting police chief who is under investigation as well. It appears as soon as I start looking at the unsolved homicides, I'm terminated. 28 unsolved homicides in King City were former police chief Ron Forgay's priority. But when he started digging, he says he found what could have been police officers turning a blind eye out on crime scenes. It seems like these, there was follow-up, and all of a sudden, then the follow-up stops. And it was just a pattern of, and I, I wanted to start looking at what officers were on the scene. Did someone come on the scene and make a, make a quick right-hand turn, and they should have kept going straight with their case. Forge says he called in an FBI agent to help him sort through those hunches he had. He says the agent got back to him last week, and then the following week, he ends up fired. And I was holding people accountable, and I think that's where the pushback came from. Accountability. People did not want to be held accountable. And then there's the letter from the Police Officers Association accusing the new interim chief, longtime commander Alex Torado, of favoring her brother last June, even saying she stepped in and stopped officers from taking him to the county jail. Forge says he would have done an internal investigation if he had the chance. Had this been brought up earlier, I would have been more than happy with an internal affairs investigation. And I'm sure Alex would have welcomed one too. But the accusations against Toronto are according to the Police Officers Association. The, the mayor says he has faith in her leadership and 30 years of experience. She's highly respected within the community and she is extremely capable of, of this new role for her, which and she has performed in that capacity as we've gone through some of these transitions over the last year and a half. So she's fully capable to be the acting police chief right now. 
As for what's next for King City, they hope to have a new chief picked by Monday. While they wait, residents are demanding answers from the city manager who decided to fire Forgay. I want him to speak up and say why this is happening, and I'm very frustrated. I am not a quitter, and I want people in King City to know that I did not quit them. I never quit them, and I never will. Now, City Manager Michael Powers refused to speak with us on camera because he says this is a personnel issue and that he cannot release the reason for this termination. And new tonight, a stunner out of King City. After less than four months on the job, the new police chief has been fired. How's that going over? Action News reporter Bianca Beltran talked with him today. She's live right now in King City. That's right, Dan. And city leaders are not giving any details as to why they decided to let go their police chief. Now, the King City went nearly two years without a permanent police chief before Ron Forg was sworn into the department in June. Now, just four months later, he was fired with no explanation. And I did talk to him this afternoon, and he says that he was completely blindsided by this decision. I felt that I did a great job for the city. I came here, I put boots on the ground immediately. I developed impact zones. The impact zones, uh, the calls for service went down to zero. We had one homicide since I've been here. The homicide has, been, has since been solved. I started looking at the unsolved homicides. And next thing you know, I guess, you know, I guess I was not a fit no more. It hurts. It hurts a lot because, I, again, I really, really had my heart in this game. Now the city has appointed Commander Alex Tirado as the temporary police chief. And just before the newscast, I received a copy of a letter from the King City Police Officers Association. It was addressed to Chief Ron Ford, detailing reasons why they believe that Commander Tirado uh, could not fulfill her responsibilities fairly. Now that letter was dated September 28th, and now Commander Tirado is the acting police chief. We are beginning tonight with uh, more fallout on the King City Police Department scandal this evening. On the same day that some of the key players were in court, there are also new accusations and a new target. We do have live team coverage, and we're going to begin with Action News reporter Felix Cortez with what happened in court today. Well, Aaron, Dan, three weeks ago, nearly half a dozen King City officers were arrested. Not all of them are involved in that alleged towing scheme, but those who are accused of taking part in it were in court today. All of them answered to the charges. Further discussions? Not guilty. That's the plea entered by two King City police officers and a tow truck operator accused of offering bribes and taking kickbacks in an alleged towing scheme that targeted unlicensed Spanish-speaking drivers. Well, just because he's been charged with committing an offense doesn't mean he's guilty of it. Juliet Peck represents former acting chief Bruce Miller, and she says Miller is the least culpable in the alleged tow scam that operated for three years and involved more than 200 cars being impounded, according to prosecutors. Chief Miller is accused of accepting one of those cars. What's at issue is a single 1995 Nissan that had 200,000 miles on it and probably a blue book value of $1,000. Acting Chief Miller has been charged with only one count of accepting a bribe, but his brother Brian, who ran the tow company, and Officer Bobby Carrillo have been charged with more counts, including conspiracy, bribing an officer, and accepting bribes. Prosecutors say Carrillo got a free car for every 10 he sent to Miller's towing. All three defendants are named in the same complaint, but the chief's attorney not ruling out the possibility she'll ask for separate trials. It's too soon to make a determination on that point because um, there is voluminous discovery. There's um, about 500 pages, and so um, we've just begun the process of going through it. Also in court today, all three defendants waived their right to a speedy preliminary hearing. They've all been ordered back to court April 2nd, at which time that hearing will be set. Aaron, Dan. All right, very good. All right, Felix, thank you. Now we want to go to Action News reporter Tom Miller with more on uh, new accusations and a new target. Tom? 
Yeah, Dan, Aaron, with all this going on right under the nose of city manager Michael Powers, the big question is how didn't he know about it? Well, tonight accusations are being made that he should have known about it, and there's a special city council meeting tonight trying to hold him accountable. Coincidentally, the city says this performance evaluation was scheduled months in advance, and it just so happens that it's happening right after the arrest of six officers within the department. Powers has served as city manager for more than seven years, and he admits that the first complaints of corruption within the police department first came to his attention in 2010. In his defense, he says even though several city council members came forward with their complaints, the alleged victims themselves didn't want to talk on the record. I have begged them to bring their people who feel that they had been wronged in so that we could get them in touch with the district attorney or the sheriff's department to investigate. No one was willing to move forward and, you know, hearsay is just hearsay, unfortunately. Wait outside the door. Towers also added that the city launched an internal investigation last summer into the alleged misconduct of two officers, Andrade and Baker, but that at that point the district attorney approached them and asked them to stop as it started its own investigation. And after speaking with several other city council members, they're saying they're just not so sure that Powers couldn't have done something more about this. And they're going to bring that up during his evaluation, which is happening right now during the public co or the, during the closed session of the city council meeting. And new tonight, a plea deal just in the last few hours in the perjury and embezzlement trial of former King City Police Chief Nick Valdivias. This is what we know so far. Just moments ago, the jury for the trial was dismissed. Nick Valdivias cut a deal with prosecutors and pleaded no contest. His charges will be reduced to a misdemeanor. He's facing uh, two, he faced two charges, embezzlement as well, and resisting or delaying a police officer. Those are both misdemeanors. The deal comes as the jury was in its second day, full day of deliberations in the case. We did learn that the jury was hung at the time they were dismissed. The case centers around a used police car that ended up in the hands of Officer Mario Motu Sr. Motu has already pleaded guilty to embezzlement charges. As for Baldivius, this is what he said today. Well, at no time did I ever intend to defraud the uh, citizens of, of King City. The jury was deadlocked means they couldn't come to a decision. So in order to avoid another trial, I just decided to plead no contest, which strictly means I am not pleading guilty to the facts of this case. 